Hello, welcome back to the channel for another POV video. I promise I'm not usually in Brighton this often, but lately I have been and it's been quite good. But uh, I was here with family again and they were actually going up on the i360, which is the big sightseeing pole thing that you'll see in this video. So I only had about 20 minutes to walk around and get some of the shots that I wanted to get. Because of that, I was a little bit rushed and I may have forgotten to turn on Rocksteady on my uh, camera, my DJI Osmo, which is what's shooting the footage that you're seeing. So I apologise for all of the shakiness, uh, won't happen again. So I'm shooting 50mm today using the EF 1.8. Very inexpensive lens, very light, very discreet. Um, you'll notice that I'm using a single point autofocus on this one. Uh, the reason being, I struggled near the beginning to actually get the camera to focus on, on the parts that I wanted it to. It was not getting there as quickly as my other lenses and obviously that's because of the cost, pro probably because of the hardware. So I decided to put it onto single autofocus so I could just move that point around and tell the camera where I want it to go so it's not guessing itself. I'm really just warming up here. I feel like this whole session is just me warming up because on average it takes me about 20 minutes before I start getting shots I'm actually happy with. Unfortunately I only had 20 minutes in total. But I do feel like I do get some photos in this session that I am happy with, maybe a couple. But I was just trying to use some foreground elements here with the, the bars on the left and shooting through using that shallow depth of field to kind of create that blurriness in the foreground and draw your eye to the subject below. I wanted to attempt a panning shot because I love doing these and I decided to uh, get someone on a bike who was going past. So here are the settings for that. I get asked quite a lot, you know, the settings I use for panning shots. Obviously, they'll vary on what you're shooting, but I would say those settings there worked very well for somebody riding on a bike. So there was this person on the phone there in these little booth things, these little benches that are all across the Brighton seafront. And um, they were really like being very animated, very loud on the phone. And they really drew my attention. So I know I wanted to get some, some photos of them, but I didn't end up getting a photo that I'm happy with still. I was here for a couple minutes. Um, I feel like a tighter vocal length, like an 85 mil, what I'm more used to, would have given me the results I wanted. Obviously I could have moved my feet and walked a little bit closer, but I don't want to intrude on their personal space. I'm very conscious of people when I'm shooting street photography. I know many people have different approaches, but me personally, I want to cause as little disruption as possible so I'm capturing people naturally what they're doing in their day-to-day -day life. I really like the, the tones of the edit that I pulled through. I feel like my editing has become quite pastel-like. I am trying to experiment with a few different settings over the last few weeks. So you'll see there the i360 in the distance, that big pole with the UFO in the middle it looks like. You'll see it's about halfway down here. That's kind of like what I was judging with how much time I have left. Um, so I was running out of time, but it was good to just get out there and shoot just to shoot. I would have kicked myself if I hadn't got the opportunity to do some photography and also film a little POV for the channel because I have been uploading uh, less frequently and I've been really missing it. So even though this isn't the best POV on my channel, definitely the shortest, definitely the shakiest, I'm still very happy that it, it's here. I decided to get closer to this Just Eat driver because I really wanted to capture him. So I captured him on the fly, wasn't looking at the camera and I got him looking right at me, which I was so happy with. I don't even think I actually saw the result of this photo until I got back. Actually, no, I'm lying. I'm looking at it right there in that clip. Never mind, ignore me. <laughs> but I, when I was shooting at the time, I definitely didn't know that I had nailed it. I loved this person here walking in their tartan, like cohort. I loved it. I liked the edit and the tones their orange hair kind of perfectly complemented the orange buildings behind. So now I'm really just walking towards where the uh, i360 is and where my family will be getting off and I just wanted to experiment with using these like these benches to my right as some leading lines to kind of draw your attention to the subject. 
so I saw these people sitting there with their dog and I thought I'll just play around a little bit here I might as well while I've got the time and again I really like the tones of the edit I feel like I'm finally settling into a an editing style which I'm quite happy with quite airy quite light um, and, and quite subtle I'm quite happy with it I like the color of their shirt and then as I'm taking these photos I decided to just get um, a horizontal photo as well just so we've got more options you can see more of the building to the left more of the people in the background and uh, here I just quickly snapped a family as well just waiting for the lights to change I like the way they're standing and the way they both have dogs again nothing really groundbreaking or interesting about these photos but you can kind of just see that when I see something I like I take photos of it this I love the man holding his dog whilst riding the uh, rental bikes in Brighton. You'll notice that there's lots of warping and um, that's because I was shooting silent shutter and I noticed a lot throughout the shoot that it was causing banding, warping and just really distorted uh, perspectives. And a silent shutter is basically an electronic shutter, so rather than a mechanical shutter. So there's no moving parts, meaning that it's completely silent. Lots of street photographers favor it because it's completely silent and more discreet. But I do feel like it does give you a few rolling shutter issues and stuff like that. So there's definite pros and cons. And I actually don't know if it has, you know, if it worsens with what shutter speed you're on, what lens you're using. As I said, I don't know too much about it. So if anybody wants to uh, tell me more about it in the comments, please feel free. I always like learning more about cameras and why things are how they are. That's all for today's POV. Short and sweet, short and shaky. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon with another one. Make sure to go down and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you very, very soon with another video. Bye.